Hello everyone and welcome to the reinforcement learning tutorial. In this video tutorial we will introduce state transition probabilities, actions, episodes, rewards and we will introduce one very important library for simulating reinforcement learning algorithms. The name of this library is OpenAI Gym. Those of you who follow my work or who are my subscribers know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And here is the post. This post contains all the explanations, graphs, and even Python codes that you can find at the end of this post. Here are the Python codes. Before I start, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this post and the video that you're currently watching. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start. The primary motivation for creating this tutorial comes from the fact that state transition probabilities, actions and rewards are important concepts in reinforcement learning that in my humble opinion are not easily understandable concepts for beginners or for students who are studying machine learning. My idea and my philosophy is that these concepts should first be explained intuitively by using examples and only at the second iteration, once a student obtains a solid practical understanding of these concepts, these concepts should be mathematically defined. This video tutorial is largely based on the OpenAI Gym Python simulation environment. OpenAI Gym Simulation Environment is a very powerful framework and environment for learning reinforcement learning algorithms. For example, by clicking on this link over here, you can access the OpenAI Gym documentation and its web page. And in OpenAI Gym, you have different environments. For example, you have this environment this is basically a computer game environment then you also have other environments such for example classic control environments such as cart and pole system mountain car pendulum and other environments in this video tutorial we consider the frozen lake open ai gym environment the frozen lake problem is illustrated in this figure Basically, this figure represents a frozen lake. We have in total 16 fields that are enumerated from 0 to 15. We start the game at the starting field denoted by S. So this is our starting field, S. And our goal is to reach the final field or the final state denoted by G. The frozen parts of the lake are denoted by F. So these are the frozen fields. The holes through which we can fall and unsuccessfully end the game are denoted by H. Again, our goal is to reach the goal state G by basically finding a path from our initial state S and avoiding the holes. So for example, this is one of the paths. Okay, so let us introduce the concept of state and observation space. Basically, the states are the fields 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 until 15. So these are the states. In total, we have 16 states and one very important thing to notice is that we always start to enumerate states from zero. Next, let us introduce the concept of an episode. An episode represents a series of steps that start from the initial state, S, and that can end either at any of the whole states, such as this one, in which case we lost the game, 
or in the goal state, such as this state, in which case we won. Okay, so let us illustrate different episodes. For example, this can be one episode. We start at the state S, we go to the field 1, and then we go down and we end our lives in this hole. So this is one episode. Let us illustrate the second episode. For example, we can start from S, then we can go to 4, we go to 8, we go to 9, we go to 10, and again, we end our lives in this hole. So this is, for example, another episode. Let us illustrate a winning episode. Since these two episodes are not winning episodes, since we end our lives in two holes, in this hole and in the hole over here. So let us illustrate the winning episode. So here's our winning episode. So we can start from here. We can basically go along this path. Then we can go over here, here, here. And instead of going right, we can go down. And again, we can go right. So this can be a winning episode. And of course, in the general case, there are many winning episodes. Next, we introduce the concept of terminal states. Terminal states are states that terminate an episode. These states are obviously holes and the goal state. So, the terminal states are this state, this state, this state, this state, and the goal state. Since these states terminate an episode. So that's the motivation for the name terminal state. These states terminate an episode. Next, we introduce the concepts of actions and action space. At every state, except at the whole state and goal state, that is, except at the terminal states, we can perform an action. For example, let us consider this case. Let us imagine that we are over here. So, in this state, obviously, we can perform this action, this action, this action, and this action. These actions are actually encoded. Left is encoded by 0, down is encoded by 1, right is encoded by 2, and up is encoded by Four. And these actions are actually elements of an action space. So action space consists of all possible actions. Here I will immediately stop and stress one very important fact in reinforcement learning. These actions are actually desired actions. Desired actions will not guarantee desired transitions. We should keep in mind that our environment is actually probabilistic. So certain desired actions will not necessarily lead to the desired transitions. For example, in this case over here, if I say I'm performing in this state 6 an action upwards or up, that doesn't mean that I will necessarily transition to this state over here. In fact, there is a probability associated with every state and every action, meaning that if I am at certain state and if I perform certain action, in this case up, there is a probability that I will go to the state number two. And this is very important to remember. So the whole point of the reinforcement learning is that the environment itself is stochastic. Also, it might happen that you might end up your journey in a state that it's completely undesirable. For example, if I'm over here in state six, and if my desired action is up, 
I kind of expect in a deterministic scenario that I will end my journey over here. Now, there is a certain probability that if you're in this state and if you perform this action, you might actually end in this state over here and this is your whole state. So there is a probability associated with this state, this action, that you might end in the state over here. In a completely deterministic scenario, that is, if you don't have a stochastic response of the system, action up from state 6 will always guarantee that you will end in state number 2. However, since this is a frozen lake, you might slip, you might go left to right, so there is a possibility that you might end in the state number 7. And that's why it's called a frozen lake environment, because your actions will not necessarily lead you to the desired field. Next, we illustrate the concept of reward. When going from one state to another, we receive a reward after we arrive at the destination. For example, in the figure above, after we arrive, for example, in state 5 from state 1, that is, if we perform this transition, we expect that we will receive a certain reward. Similarly, if, for example, we go from this state to our final or goal state, we ex expect that we will receive a certain reward. Better action or more favorable actions that will lead us closer to our destination should receive more rewards. The rewards can be positive, negative or zero. Usually negative rewards are given if our destination state is less favorable. Similarly, more positive rewards are given if the destination states are more positive. And it seems very important to emphasize that it's our own choice how to assign the rewards. In the frozen lake example, the rewards are distributed as follows. If you reach the frozen field, we obtain the reward of zero. If you reach the whole field, we obtain the reward of zero. And finally, if you reach the goal state, G, we obtain the reward of 1. And of course, we can assign different reward values to different fields. It's completely our choice. Rewards are very important since reinforcement learning algorithms aim at finding a sequence of actions that maximize the expected sum of rewards. One very important thing to keep in mind is that rewards are not completely deterministic in the general case. This means that the reward obtained by reaching a certain state is not in the general case predetermined. So we can assign a certain probability with rewards, meaning that if we are in certain state and if we perform a certain action to reach another state, we have a certain probability of receiving a reward in that final state. However, in the frozen lake case that we consider in this video, the rewards are purely deterministic. And finally, we arrive at a very important concept of a state transition probability. And let us explain this important concept by using our original example. So let us consider the following scenario. Let us imagine that we are in this state over here and that we perform action down. In the purely deterministic case, by applying the action down, we should arrive in this state over here. However, this is generally not the case, since our environment is stochastic. In fact, this will happen only with a certain probability. For example, with a probability of 1 over 3. To repeat, if we are in this state and if we perform the action down, there is a probability of 1 over 3 that our next state will be 10. Also, this is very important. By applying the action down in state 
six, we can actually end our journey in state seven. And there is certain probability associated with this. So there is a probability that we might end in this state, the state number seven, if we are in the state number six and we perform the action down. And similarly, by applying the action down in state six, there is some probability that we might end our journey in state five. So if you're here and we intend to go down, since this is a slippery lake, we might end our life over here. And of course, there is a certain probability associated with this transition. And let us say that this probability is one over three. So let us summarize the three cases. We are in the state six and we apply action down. The probability of reaching the state 10 is P1. And it's 1 over 3. Then, we are in this state. We apply action down. And the probability of reaching state 7, that is this state, is P2. And it's 1 over 3. Then, we are in the state 6, we apply the intended action down. However, there is a probability that we might end our journey in state number 5, and this probability is P3, and is equal 1 over 3. P1 plus P2 plus P3 obviously should be equal to 1, since the sum of all probabilities should be equal to 1. These probabilities, P1, P2, and P3, are actually called state transition probabilities. They govern how we go from one state to another state under certain actions. And a lot of reinforcement learning algorithms are based on learning these probabilities. That is, learning the model of our system of or the model of our environment and over here i summarized everything what i said and i formally mathematically defined transition probability so you have this notation this is basically conditional probability when we are in state s and when we perform action a there is a certain probability that we will end in certain certain state and here's definition and in our case we have these three equations so we are in the state six we perform down the probability of reaching 10 is one over three similarly we are at six we apply down the probability of reaching seven is one over three and finally, if we are at 6, we perform down, the probability of reaching 5 is 1 over 3. Hopefully, by now you obtain the basic understanding of important concepts such as transition probabilities, terminal states, episodes, and rewards. In the sequel, I will explain you how to simulate the frozen lake environment by using the open AI gym environment. As you can see over here, I'm using the Anaconda Python environment. And I will explain you how to install the OpenAI Gym environment or library in Anaconda environment. However, if you're using some other Python editor or some environment, the procedure is very similar. You just need to open a terminal window and execute two commands. To obtain the terminal window in Anaconda, I need to click over here on Environments. Then I need to click over here on Base Root and I need to open my terminal. Then I need to execute these two commands. So this is the first command. And as you can see over here, all the requirements are satisfied. This is because I already installed OpenAI Gym. 
The second command that you need to run is this one. This command will install this module toy text. Okay, so let us close our terminal, let us minimize this window, and the next step is to open our Python environment. In my case, I'm using the spider environment. I will launch it. I have to say that I like the spider environment very much since it reminds me of MATLAB. Namely, it's very easy to execute commands in spider. You can simply select a code block, for example, the code block over here, and you can simply execute this code block. Here I obtained the error since I didn't properly select the code lines, and here it is. And this is pretty much similar to MATLAB. I will erase my previous workspace by clicking over here since I want to start from scratch and then I will type CLS to clear this window. The first step, of course, is to import the gym environment. The next step is to create our frozen lake environment. I will simply call this function gym.make, specify the name of the environment, and specify the render mode. Here you need to specify Frozen Lake version 1. There is also Frozen Lake version 0. However, this is an obsolete version. You can also play with other environments. For example, you have environments that are dealing with control problems. However, I will not cover these environments in this video. Once we invoke or create our environment, we need to reset this environment. So let's do that. Okay, the next step is to render the environment. We call this function render. So let us render our environment. So we don't see anything over here. So where is our window? Where is our environment? Well, you can notice a small window over here. If you click over here, or a small icon over here, you will obtain this window. And this is our environment. Here we are. This is our character. These are the fields 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, until 16. Start state, end state, holes, and frozen parts. We can also obtain more information about our environment by typing environment.observation space. This code line will give us the dimensions of our observation space. Our observation space is discrete and it contains 16 elements. The elements correspond to states. That is, the first state is the state 0, the state over here, and the last state is the state 15 or the state over here, that is our final or the goal state. Similarly, we can obtain more information about action space. We can see that the action space, as, is, as expected, is a discrete space with four elements. These elements are left, and left is encoded by zero, down, that is encoded by one, right, which is encoded by two, and up, that is encoded by three. Next, let us generate a random action. We will generate a random action by calling this function action space dot sample. So let us execute this function and let's see what will happen. If we execute this function, the output will be 3. And let us execute the complete code line. And here's the result. Once more, it is 1. Since we generated another random action. So what happens here behind the scenes? This function sample basically randomly draw an element from a set consisting of 0, 1, 2, and 3. That is, the elements of this set correspond to four actions. So we are randomly drawing an action, we are assigning this action to random action, and in the next step, 
by using the function step, we apply this random action. The randomly drawn action is one, and this corresponds to down. So we expect if our environment is completely deterministic, that if we apply action down from this state, we will go to the state over here. However, as I explained previously, our environment is not deterministic. It's stochastic. And consequently, this might not be the case. However, let us see the result. Aha! Uh -huh. Indeed, we were able to go to this state. So we were quite lucky. We were very lucky. Now, let us investigate the output of this function and let us see what is the output. So we obtain 4, 0, false, false, and we obtain some probabilities. And let us try to interpret this output. This output should be interpreted as follows. The first output is number 4, and this is our observation, or this output corresponds to the final state. This is the state number 4, or the state over here. The second output is our reward. As I explained previously, frozen fields correspond, correspond to reward of 0. Then, the third output is a Boolean variable that stands for the final state, or actually better to say, it stands for the terminal state. So if our final state is a terminal state, we will obtain here true. In our case, since this state is not a terminal state, that is, it's not a whole or the goal state, we obtain false. This argument over here is not important and the last output argument is the transition probability. Okay, now we know how to generate random steps or actually random samples, that is the random action samples, and we know how to apply these random actions. And we know how to update our simulation environment. We can also apply a deterministic step. We apply the deterministic step by simply calling this function step and by specifying the value of the desired action. In our case, this is 1. However, you can play with other parameters. So let us apply this action and let us see the result. Aha, uh -huh, we are lucky again. So what happened over here, we were in this state, and we went to this state. And let us verify this by looking at the output. So here is our output. The state is state number 8. This is the state indeed. This is the state number 8. Reward is 0 as expected. This state is not a terminal state. This argument is not important, and the transition probability is given over here. We can also reset the environment by calling this function. So, here it is. We returned to the beginning state. So, our character went to the initial or starting state, S. And finally, let us see how to obtain more information about transition probability. We can obtain all the transition probabilities by basically typing env.p. p stands for transition probabilities. So we obtain a huge dictionary with a lot of entries. Now, we can access a particular transition probabilities by typing and by specifying the first argument. The first argument is our state. The second argument is the action. So let us see what is, for example, P01.
here is the result. Basically, this notation P01 corresponds to the notation I introduced at the beginning of this video. So P01 is this part over here. First argument is 0 and the second argument is 1. Here is the first argument and here is the second argument. This state is our origin state and this is the action that we perform at the origin state. Now, let us interpret the output. Let us focus on the first row. The interpretation of this first row is the following one. Again, I will write the transition probability and I will write my S0 origin state and action 1. This means that I am in state S0 and I'm applying action A1. And as the result, I will go to this state, I'll go to the state S0 with this probability over here. That is, with a probability of 1 over 3. Again, this first row should be interpreted as follows. We are in the state 0. And this is our state, so this is our initial state. We are over here. We are applying action 1. Let us see again what is action 1. We can see that by going over here and seeing that our action 1 is down. So from 0 we apply action 1 and over here, we obtain that the probability of staying at the state 0 by applying the action 1 or the action down is 1 over 3. Similarly, the second row should be interpreted as follows. We are in the state 0. We apply action 1 or we apply down action. As the result we obtain or we actually go to the state 4 this is our state and the probability of this transition is again 1 over 3. So we can write P S4 given that we are in the state S0 and we are performing action 1 is 1 over 3. These last arguments correspond, as you might expect, to the terminal states. Since these arguments are false, we are not in the terminal state. And over here, basically, we obtained that P, S1, given that we were in S0 and applied action A1, is again 1 over 3. So there is a probability of 1 over 3 of going from this state to this state over here to the state 1 by applying down action at the state 0. Okay, so that would be all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. If you like the videos that I create or if you want to support my channel, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.